When the producers hired someone with virtually no experience to not only be the armorer, but also the assistant prop master, they made a crucial decision to put safety of their cast and crew on the back burner. Her jail calls tell us who Ms. Gutierrez really is. Helena's parents lost their daughter. Matt lost his wife. Helena's son lost not only his mother, but everything she had to offer him for the rest of her life. This is True Crime Arizona, an Arizona's Family Originals podcast. April 15th. A New Mexico courtroom is full of people while others all over the country open their computers to join a live stream to watch. It was an unprecedented sentencing day for an unprecedented trial and case. Hannah Gutierrez Reed, now 27 years old, waiting to find out if she'd spend time in prison for an involuntary manslaughter conviction in the death of Helena Hutchins, the cinematographer for the movie Rust, starring famed actor Alec Baldwin. The fatal accident happened on set in 2021. Hutchins killed when a prop gun Alec Baldwin was rehearsing a scene with inside a church went off. Somehow with a live bullet inside. It was hard for everyone to believe something like this could happen. Before she was thrust into a negative spotlight, who was Hannah Gutierrez Reed? The young armorer is from Bullhead City, Arizona, the daughter of a well-known Hollywood armorer too she wanted to take after her father. We spent weeks reporting on this as details unraveled themselves in court. Here's part of our reporting leading up to sentencing day. True Crime correspondent Brianna Whitney monitored the trial for us today. Brianna, the trial actually started last week. What have we learned so far? It's been interesting and a lot of people are anxious to see how this unfolds. Basically, there's two clear sides here. The prosecution says Arizona armorer Hannah Gutierrez-Reed violated safety protocols and neglected her responsibilities, which led to the prop gun being loaded with live ammo. The defense says this is Alec Baldwin's fault for not following common sense gun safety rules. The armorer from Bullhead City, now front and center in a New Mexico courtroom with the nation watching. 26-year-old Hannah Gutierrez Reed on trial for involuntary manslaughter of Helena Hutchins, the cinematographer struck and killed by a live bullet on the Rust movie set in 2021. In court Monday, rehearsal of that gun scene with Alec Baldwin shown. So camera left for you. I'll stand right here for you. So whip it out. Yeah. Okay, let me get this all greased and ready. Prosecutors say there never should have been live bullets on set, and Gutierrez Reed didn't make vital safety checks that would have caught the problem. On the stand today, Rust crew member Ross Adiego, who was there when the fatal shot rang out. Did you hear anything from Ms. Hutchins? If I did, it was just, uh, you know, the groaning and discomfort from being uh, shot by a firearm. I heard them call for a, a life flight, so they were trying to stable <laughs> stabilize her to get her in a helicopter last week a weapon specialist testified about the ammunition she saw and how live bullets did look and sound different than the dummy bullets that had more of a narrow head and would rattle this was all of the ammunition that was loose and not in boxes that was located on top of the cart these two rounds were sent to the FBI because they were suspected live rounds, which the FBI confirmed. The defense says Alec Baldwin created a chaotic and unsafe environment for the crew, including Gutierrez Reed, and that she was having to split her time as both the armorer and a props assistant at just 24 years old. But prosecutors also say Gutierrez Reed used cocaine, marijuana, and alcohol the night before the shooting. The decisions she made that day ultimately contributed to Ms. Hutchins' death. Before the verdict, that's how some of the testimony went, complete with pictures shown in court as exhibits. With Alec Baldwin also facing this same charge in his upcoming trial this summer, what happened with Gutierrez Reed could shape and affect what happens with the actor, which was causing even more fanfare around this trial. Then, the verdict. The jury finding her guilty 
of involuntary manslaughter. Yes, we learned a lot during the trial, but I think we learned even more during sentencing, this time about who Helena Hutchins was, her final conversations with loved ones, and for the first time, had insight into what was going through the mind of the judge during all of this testimony. This is often the most emotional part of a trial when victim impact statements are read by those left with grief and loss in the absence of the victim. This was emotional and at the same time, historic, setting precedents for something so rare and tragic. The sentencing hearing began with prosecutor Carrie Morrissey giving her remarks to the judge. I wasn't sure what recommendation would be appropriate in this unprecedented case until last week when I completed the review of Ms. Gutierrez's jail calls. It was my sincere hope during this process that there would be some moment when Ms. Gutierrez took responsibility, expressed some level of remorse that was genuine, and that moment has never come. Ms. Gutierrez continues to refuse to accept responsibility for her role in the death of Helena Hutchins. Rather than accept responsibility, she has chosen to place blame on the witnesses who testified against her, me, you, the jurors, the set medic, and the paramedics who tried to save Ms. Hutchins' life. Her jail calls, and there were probably close to 200 of them, tell us who Ms. Gutierrez really is. And in the, in the state's opinion, uh, the content and tone of her calls demonstrates that Ms. Gutierrez should not receive any type of a reduced sentence. Helena Hutchins died due to a cascade of safety violations that began with Ms. Gutierrez introducing live rounds to the movie set, loading one into a prop gun, telling the members of the crew that it was a cold gun, thereby ensuring that it would make its way into the hands of Mr. Baldwin. That conduct, absent responsibility or remorse, is deserving of a sentence of 18 months in the Department of Corrections with a designation as a serious violent offender. And that is what the state will be requesting today. Those jail calls detailing conversations between Gutierrez, Reed, and others, some about how this accident doesn't deserve certain prison time and how this whole ordeal messes up her modeling career. Those calls would come back to haunt Gutierrez, Reed, in the end. We knew Helena Hutchins was a highly talented cinematographer and sought out in Hollywood but we didn't know a lot about how she got the job on the movie Rust. Her agent, Craig Mizrahi, gave insight into how this opportunity came about for her and the light she brought both on and off set. Okay, I was compelled to be present today to express the impact of the loss of Helena, who was a cherished friend, wife, mother, and artist, senselessly lost on October 21st, 2021. I was first introduced to Helena when a mutual friend sent me samples of her cinematography. I was pleasantly surprised to see how mature and refined it was, especially given the small budgets she was working with. I imagined what she could do if given the time and resources of a large film, and I instantly knew I wanted to work with her. What stood out for me was her passion, her intense preparation, her resourcefulness and creativity on set, and the kindness and generosity she showed to all those she worked with. This rare combination of talent work ethic, collaboration, and family support was what truly set her apart. When Rust came her way, she felt excited for the visual challenge that a Western would bring. She enjoyed meeting the director, Joel, and believed in his vision for the film, so we went for it. Two days before she died, Helena called me. It was very late, but she wanted to say she just had dinner with Joel and Alec, and she was so happy to be working with them. She felt the film would be a great next step and was excited for what was to come in 2022. I agreed and said, sleep well, tomorrow's another big day. That was the last time I spoke to Helena. 
October 21st was a fateful day that would change the lives of so many. Most of all, Andros, who at nine years old, would have to somehow comprehend the terrifying reality of losing his mother in this way. In the time that's passed, while the pain persists, the circumstances surrounding the disaster force upon us so many questions, with one in particular above all, how could this have happened? It's my opinion that generally speaking, film producers are responsible to ensure the cast and crew members hired are experienced enough to handle their jobs. And when it comes to hiring the armorer on a Western, I believe safety is the only job. So when the producers hired someone with virtually no experience to not only be the armorer, but also the assistant prop master, two very challenging positions in their own right, they made a crucial decision to put sa the safety of their cast and crew on the back burner. As for Ms. Gutierrez-Reed, it's my opinion that she should not have held either position, much less both, but that once accepted, the responsibility should have been taken more seriously. Sadly, it wasn't, and we all know the result. Since that terrible day, I've spoken with hundreds of producers, film executives, and directors about how we can come together as an industry to make sets safer from gun violence. But the truth is that if Ms. Gutierrez-Reed and the producers of Rust simply followed the decades-old written guidelines for the film industry, specifically the use of firearms and ammunition, this tragedy would never have happened. In that sense, I hope we can all agree that this was not a simple accident. It was a chain of events that led to the killing of someone, and that chain would have been broken if the armor was doing the job she was hired to do. Many of Hutchins' friends addressed the court, both there in person and virtually over Zoom. They shed tears and recalled memories with her, telling the world about her creative mind and imagination. But perhaps no one's words held more weight than Joel Souza's. Not only was he Helena Hutchins' friend, but he was the director and screenwriter of the movie, who was also shot in the shoulder when that prop gun went off. He survived. I would like to thank the court as well as Ms. Morrissey and her team for allowing me to speak today. I struggled with what to say here today because what I want is simply not possible. I want that none of this ever happened, that everyone's okay and that lives weren't destroyed and that worst of all, Helena's life wasn't lost. I would not presume to speak for Helena nor for her husband or her son, for her parents or her sister, but I would like to say something on their behalf if I might. Helena's parents lost their daughter her sister lost a sibling and confidant. Matt lost his wife, the other half of himself. Helena's son lost not only his mother, but everything she had to offer him for the rest of her life. The course of his life has been irrevocably altered, and the world lost not only a person that was a gifted artist, but a truly kind and compassionate person, which often seemed to be in short supply these days. As for myself, what it's done to me and the burdens it's placed on me, both emotionally and physically, are my private burdens burdens, and I think I'll choose to keep them that way today. What I will say is that one moment the world made sense, and the next moment it didn't, and it still doesn't, and I don't know if it ever will again. I want everyone damaged by Miss Reed's failures that day to find peace. I want this whole thing not to have been consumed by the world as some sick form of mass entertainment. I want to still believe in the better angels of our nature. I want the pain to go away. I want to be who I was before this happened, and above all, I want Helena to be back home with her husband and son in the house she never got to live in. Uh, Helena not only had an incredible talent for her art, but she had a talent for life. She was a touchstone for all who knew her, and those of us who were lucky enough to have shared in her fleeting time on this planet are better for it. Before Hannah Gutierrez-Reed would speak herself, high-profile attorney Gloria Allred had statements on behalf of the Hutchins family to read in court, including from Helena's mother. This is a statement of Olga Solovey, Helena Hutchins' mother. Good afternoon. My name is Olga, and I am the mother of Helena. It is extremely difficult for me to speak about this. Helena was the best daughter on this earth. I remember how she graduated with the most excellent marks from two universities here in Ukraine. Even so, she left for the USA to study and pursue her dreams. She had a beautiful family, 
her son Andros. She loved him madly and endlessly. All of her friends absolutely adored her. After this tragedy, my life has been split into two, before and after. Time does not heal. It simply prolongs my pain and suffering. I have hope that the guilty, those that are responsible for the death of my daughter, will be punished fairly and sentenced justly. Justice must prevail. Victim impact statements are so important in this phase of a trial, but possibly even more important what the defendant says to the judge. This was Hannah Gutierrez Reed's chance to prove she did have remorse and could understand the serious and grave nature of what happened and the recklessness of her behavior. She stepped up to the podium. To the court. First and foremost, my heart aches for the Hutchins family and friends and colleagues as well. And it has since the day this tragedy occurred. Helena has been and always will be an inspiration to me. I understand she was taken too soon and I pray that you all find peace. I am beyond grateful that Joel survived that terrible day. My heart goes out to the film industry for the devastating pain that this tragedy caused and the old wounds that have been reopened. I am saddened by the way the media sensationalized our traumatic tragedy and portrayed me as a complete monster, which has actually been the total opposite of what's been in my heart. Your Honor, when I took on Rust, I was young and I was naive, but I took my job as seriously as I knew how to. Despite not having proper time, resources, and staffing, when things got tough, I just did my best to handle it. Today, I humbly ask you to consider probation, a probation where I can contribute to society through community service, and I can continue my counseling, and I welcome any classes that you may deem necessary for me to attend. I give you my word now that I would strictly follow the rules and respect the parameters of that probation. I beg you, please don't give me more time. The jury has found me in part at fault for this god-awful tragedy, but that doesn't make me a monster. That makes me human. Thank you. Her father, the one she followed in the footsteps of to become an armorer, quickly addressing the court right after his daughter spoke. It's a horrible tragedy for that wonderful lady, lady to lose her life. Also be a tragedy to put my daughter, Hannah, in the penitentiary for that. It's a lead she brought, introduced live ammunition on the set. That's not true. Why would she? The two people responsible for whatever come on the set are the vendor and the property master who had a word for it. On that terrible day, they had Hannah off the set doing prop duties, and she asked him to please bring her back on when Mr. Baldwin comes so he could do a final check on the gun and its instructions. They did, they did not do that. The final person to speak directly to the judge before she'd hand down her sentence, Gutierrez Reed's defense attorney, Jason Bowles, knowing what he was about to say may resonate with the judge, trying to level with her. I just want the court to know primarily that she has felt remorse. And maybe I've talked to her as much as, as anybody, at least on the legal side, Ms. Cisneros. She's cried. She's broken down. She's had mental breakdowns. She said, if only, many, many, many times. But she has truly felt remorse, and I will tell the court that, as an officer of the court, that she has indicated that to me. This court has seen jail calls she's made. I, I would submit to this court that you could probably survey 100 people after something like this happens, uh, including everybody that participated in the trial, scrutinize all of our calls, and pick out something bad that one of us said. Because, Your Honor, none of us 
are what we are on our best day, nor are we what we are on our worst day. Judge Mary Marlowe Sommer was ready to hand down a sentence. The defense, fighting for probation only. The prosecution, fighting for the maximum sentence for the charge, 18 months in prison. Sometimes a judge will find a middle ground in their decision, but not this time. I did not hear you take accountability in your allocution. You said you were sorry. You were sorry, but not you were sorry for what you did. You were sorry for, and hope they can find peace. It was your attorney that had to tell the court that you were remorseful. The word remorse, a deep regret coming from a sense of guilt for past wrongs. That's not you. You're here by sentences follow, stand. I am sentencing you to 18 months of incarceration at a New Mexico women's correctional facility. I find that what you did constitutes a serious violent offense. It was committed in a physically violent manner, a fatal gunshot done with your recklessness in the face of knowledge that your acts were reasonably likely to result in serious harm. You were the armorer, the one that stood between a safe weapon and a weapon that could kill someone. You alone turned a safe weapon into a lethal weapon. But for you, Miss Hutchins would be alive, a husband would have his partner, and a little boy would have his mother. Judge Sommer not mincing words one bit. Her demeanor came off annoyed with Hannah Gutierrez Reed, and you could see that in her face when she delivered her sentence. 18 months in prison, the maximum time legally possible for an involuntary manslaughter conviction. You could look at that and think, well, if she was convicted, this can't go well for Alec Baldwin and his upcoming trial. Clearly circumstances and people's actions, or lack thereof, were found to be criminally liable on set. But you could also look at it differently. If she was convicted, and you heard the judge say, you alone caused this, could that actually help Alec Baldwin's case? Was it all Hannah Gutierrez Reed's fault? It won't be the same judge who tries Baldwin, but the point still stands. I went to criminal defense attorney Russ Richelsoff, a practicing attorney in Arizona, unaffiliated with the case. I figured he could explain more from a legal perspective what this could mean for Baldwin, Sands, public scrutiny and speculation online. Somebody died and a jury is naturally, you know, the public in general, naturally wants to hold somebody responsible for that. So it makes it very convenient for Mr. Baldwin that there is a person who's already been held responsible. Richelsoff said it will depend on if the prosecution can show Baldwin had more overall responsibility on set. That could be the difference between a not guilty or guilty conviction for him. If he had some management responsibility and either, you know, and, and concerns were brought to his attention and he didn't address them properly, or he was responsible for hiring somebody who wasn't qualified, that could be, you know, a stronger basis for a conviction against him. It's unclear at this point whether Hannah Gutierrez Reed's conviction and sentence will be admissible in Baldwin's trial. It would make a big difference if it is. But even without that, it's certain Baldwin's defense is still going to put blame onto her. You now, as part of their defense, they're going to blame the armorer. It's not his responsibility to make sure these firearms are safe. The, you know, the movie studio hired this person to do this job. If Baldwin were to be found criminally responsible for Hutchins' death, Richelsoff says they can and most definitely have learned what to do and what not to do watching Gutierrez Reed's trial. I think that if Mr. Baldwin is convicted, his defense team will make sure to, to address that and show that he does express remorse. Moral of the story, he believes Alec Baldwin could be found not guilty. The public doesn't like it when they feel like people have gotten away with something. 
And the same thing with juries. They, they want to hold somebody responsible, especially when there's been a death like this. So the fact that she's been convicted helps him because somebody has already been held responsible. Alec Baldwin's trial is set to start in July. Many anxiously awaiting and anticipating if the A-list actor will face the same fate Gutierrez Reed did. It's easy to get caught up in the fanfare and interest this entire tragedy and trial has become. But at the heart of what happened, a mother, daughter, and friend lost her life in an unexpected instant. Helena Hutchins' agent leaving us with how she believes her life would have been lived based on the impact she already made. I often think about what Helena's future would have been, and it makes me smile. I can assure you it would have been bright, filled with spending time with Andros and watching him grow up. She would have been able to help support her family in Ukraine, especially when they needed her most through the horror of war. She would have traveled the world shooting beautiful images and eventually becoming the director that would change hearts and minds with her poignant and purposeful storytelling. In the end, she'd likely finish her career as she started at the American Film Institute, getting back to the next generation of uh, filmmakers. Sadly, we'll never know because Helena's life was taken away from us much too soon. True Crime Arizona, the podcast, is hosted by me, Brianna Whitney, and produced by Sergio Hernandez. It's a production of Arizona's Family, 3TV, CBS5, and azfamily.com in Phoenix, Arizona. This is True Crime Arizona, an Arizona's Family Originals podcast. 